Hello, welcome to Board Game Base Coats. Today we're playing through Megaland, a push your luck style game. Let's go ahead and jump in. You come to Megaland not for power ups, but for coins. Search each new level for treasures to build a booming business back in Megaland City. Be careful though, if you go too far, you'll lose it all. Alright, now I played a couple push your luck games, but this is the one that really. Um, attracted me. So this top row of cards would be the star cards. You always play with these. Now in the top left corner it tells you how many resources it costs, how many different resources it costs, and in the bottom would be how much money it gives you, and there's usually some special ability. Um, now it's these star cards that really just give you money, and you do need money to win the game. Now, the more expensive the cards, generally, uh, the better uh, it is in this game. Alright, so this one costs six different resources, that's huge. Alright, now this bottom row is basically special abilities. So again, one resource in the top left, and if you notice, uh, there are two different cards in there. Alright, so this is a difference from how the game is supposed to be played. Um, what you're supposed to do is pick a total of seven cards. So this. Uh, two resource deck has three different cards in it. The three resource deck has like seven or something. Um, out of all these cards in the bottom row, you're supposed to pick about seven cards, I believe. Um, but to be honest, I do it this way. Uh, one, because it's easier. And uh, two, I kind of like drawing cards and seeing something randomly come up. And then when you come to the buy phase, you have basically a choice. Do you want to get that card and reveal something down there uh, for your opponents, or do you just want to get something else? So I like that choice, alright? So that's why I play this way, so please keep that in mind. Now besides buying buildings, you can buy hearts. Now to buy hearts, they have to be resources that are the same. So two resources buy you a fifth, three resources buy you a sixth, alright? Now the meat of the game is, um, oh, here's the first, per, uh, first player token, is drawing from the adventure deck. Um, and there's this, this um, there's the adventure deck. Now here's this card, which shows you the ratio of the cards in the adventure deck. So you are pushing your luck, but at all times, uh, you're keeping in mind what is in there, what has been revealed, and I do like that. Now here I'm just giving everyone four hearts to start. So all the characters are the same, uh, which kind of throws me back to video games of old. This does have a video game theme where the sprites were different, but essentially the same. So um, out of all these characters, I usually play uh, the crazy old guy. So let's go ahead and start the game. So our first player here is Frog. So what the players do, if they want to press their luck, they come to this pad and then we draw a card, it's just that simple. So let's see what we've got. And we drew two damage. All right, so it does two damage uh, and we have two bats. So two damage right off the bat. And there we go. So it really is just this simple. So now everyone is down to two life. Now if you look in the bottom left corner, um, you can see that there are two two damage cards in the deck. Now what I'm doing here is, if you've survived the damage, then you get a treasure card. So the treasure cards get dealt, or the resource cards get dealt out, everyone returns home, and then basically a new round begins. So it's still the same first player. So they will come in if they want to come in, and then they stay home if they want to stay home. So everyone went in, so let's see what we got. <sighs> All right, so we got the bunny rabbit. Now if you had carrots, you could pay it off. <laughs> It does one damage, so one damage to everybody. So now everyone is down to one life. Okay, so choices, choices. So there were three cards in the deck that do one damage. So so you can see how the game goes. So you see the layout of the cards as they come out and then you decide, well, do you wanna press your luck and try again? So this is why you know, I've never why I liked this card or this card game, but I don't really like pressure luck games. And here I am, crazy guy. I, I pretty much always go for it. So let's say we got and we draw. Ah, uh, so this one gives you an extra treasure card. All right, 
very great. So he's the only one that went, so he's the only one that will get treasures. And there we go. So if you do get killed, all the treasures, all the resources you drew just get discarded. You get nothing. Um, so that can feel kind of swingy. So what's happening here is everyone is passing, including old Gagger. All right, so everyone passed, and this is just for fun. I just reveal what it was to see if we were all chicken. Yeah, we were all chickens. We could have got more treasure, uh, more resources. So let's go ahead and move on to the buy phase. And again, we go in order, and you can only buy one thing, and we go round and round and round until everyone passes. So uh, Frog here has two different resources. Um, so he can buy any of those buildings. Right now, what he's choosing to do is pass. So he's gambling that everyone will not pass um, because if you have any resource cards at the end of the buy phase, you discard all of them. So let's see if everyone passes. <laughs> and obviously, um, Goggles Girl here is not passing, so she's going to spend this carrot uh, to buy something. And she's going to go buy the Reptile Stable. So if she returns home, she draws an extra treasure, and she'll put one in. So the great thing about this card is, is you can kind of mitigate the ratio of those treasures. Next up here is Cat. And Cat, your two carrots. Oh, lucky. Now, if you notice, in the top right corner of the resource is a small number. Uh, this tells you how many of that resource exists. So what Cat is doing here is, with the two of the same resource, buying a fifth heart. All right. Uh, moving on to Crazy Gem Guy. This is who I usually play. Uh, let's see what he's got. Now, he had a lot of extra cards. So he's a fish there, a cube, a gear. And again, the top right corner, um, it shows you how many of each is in there. And each of these resources has a different amount. And I do like that extra bit of information. So he throws in all four, and he's going to go ahead and buy the Lodge. Now here, this one gives you two gold during every night phase. So what uh, Crazy Gem Guy has done is basically put a timer on the game. He's going to gain two gold until the game ends, which is when someone gets 20. So of all the locations, I do feel that those um, are kind of a little broken. I wish it was one gold instead of two. Anyway, um, here we are. Frog has bought a cafe for straight two gold. And so he's got money on the board too. So again, the game isn't about the hearts, it's about the gold. And sometimes it's hard to remember that. So here we are, back to Goggles Girl. And uh, she... Oh, I forgot to... Um, oh no. So she has a building, so she's going to put that fish in the building. So this is how you can keep resources uh, from turn to turn. Alright, so she has kept one resource. So uh, we're now moving on to the night phase. Basically, this is the phase where everything gets reset. Um, I tend to blend it with the buy phase, but um, the key port part here is some of the locations have some effect, okay? So, uh, crazy guy here has this lodge, and it will pay him two gold. So there we are. So two to two, he and Frog are tied. So the first turn marker gets passed to the next player. And there we go. Uh, finally, we take the adventure deck and shuffle it and toss it back in there. Now, this is a game that's great for expansions. Let's get another deck. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, we are running the level, so everyone wants to go in. So let's see what we got. <gasps> Two damage on the plant. Now, in the top left corner there, you can see a little uh, arrow. So you can get a jump ability <laughs> to jump over some enemies. And how you get that is some of the locations give you the jump. All right. So anyway, everyone has taken two damage, but everyone has survived, so everyone gets dealt a treasure. Now the treasures are not revealed, it's a secret, um, until you stop, and then we get to the buy phase, okay? So those remain face down. So we decide again, and it always goes in turn order. So Goggle Girl went first, and everyone's wanting to get, get in there and play. So just keep in mind the ratio... Oh! <laughs> the three damage card, which I think kills everybody. Yep. Three damage, three damage. Oh, except for one. Because Cat had five lives. Yeah. 
So everyone else has lost their treasures. Oops. Oh no, even Cat. Because Cat had five and it lost a total of five. So even with his extra heart. So Cat did not make it. So unfortunately everyone lost the treasure. So that ends that uh, run. So we're back to the buy phase. And of course, the only one with a resource is Goggle Girl. And she's going to go ahead and spend it. Okay, so she's spent her one resource and she's going to buy an herb hut. So if she falls, so basically if she dies, she will bring home one of those resources. So um, if this situation comes up, she's guaranteed to have one resource. And then, of course, um, she can draw an extra and swap it out. All right, so everyone else here is just going to go ahead and pass because no one has any money. <laughs> All right, so that was a quick little turn. So we are back to the knife phase. Again, this is our opportunity to reset everything and pass on the first player marker. Now, huge advantage for Crazy Gem Guy because he has this lodge. Um, he gets two gold. So yeah, there it is. This really does illustrate the power of uh, this card. And there are a few others that do pretty much the same thing, but um, getting this card early is really kind of devastating. All right, so moving on. Cat is now first player. And so Cat goes first, then Gem Guy, Frog, and Goggle Girl. All right, so let's see what we got. We've got, ooh, so this card provides an extra treasure. So instead of one treasure, we now get two, okay? Now, if you look at the little um, ratio guide in the left corner, so there's only one of these uh, in that adventure deck. And there's one three damage card. It's that big red snake, which we saw. There are two two damage cards. There are three one damage cards. And then there are three no damage cards. All right, so uh, definitely want those. So everyone is going back in, back on the adventure. So let's see how we do this time. All right, and we draw. Ah, the snake again. All right. So three damage once again. Yeah, and uh, I'm just doing it in turn order here. Um, it's not really important, but it is just good to get into that rhythm of going in turn order. Um, when I initially played the game, um, I kept passing that turn marker every time we went for a run on the level. So um, warning to you guys, if you've never played this game, Hang on to that first turn marker. It only gets passed after a buy phase, after a night phase. All right, so we keep the same first player. All right, so Cat has two lives, so she's going in. Uh, crazy old guy, he's going in just because he's getting money no matter what. Frog is passing, he's down to one life. And Goggle Girl, now she's got this herb hut. So she figures, you know what, I'm going in. So let's see what we got. Uh, it's one of the blanks, all right, so the scenic route here. So for those that went on the adventure, they get a treasure card. So poor frog, he stayed home, he gets nothing. So everyone else is coming back home to gloat, I guess, about their treasures. All right, so now uh, we reset that and then we go again. So the thing to remember is now you've got so many more cards. So crazy old guy's like, no, I'm, I'm gonna keep this. Frog, of course, is passing and Goggle Girl. So only Cat went. So let's see how Cat does. Oof. And Cat found another empty landscape. All right, so Cat gets another treasure. So you kind of get this weight. So this balance of, okay, I have my buildings. Okay, I have my hearts. And oh man, look at the ratio of cards that are left in that deck. And this is what won me over. And this is the reason I bought this game. So I do like this relationship, um, even if I feel some of the buildings are a little too powerful. So here I just drew this for fun. It's the Sludge Monster. So um, it does one damage, but you can jump over it. So jumping, hmm, kind of a powerful thing. So Cat was first player, so Cat gets to draw first. And wow, look at all the resources. So what I like to do is kind of just uh, group them, putting the same resources together. And again, in the top right corner, you can see um, just how many of them are in the deck, all right? So um, he's not spending those. He's gonna spend three different resources to buy a building. So 
Uh, again, it's three, it's different resources to buy buildings, it's the same resources to buy hearts. So he's gonna go ahead, uh, she's gonna go ahead and buy an arcade. So uh, she gets three gold right now and two gold at the end of every turn where she doesn't have enough. Now, I forgot to give her her gold, don't worry, I will remember, and she will get her gold. All right, so she'll be on the boards with some gold. Now, crazy old guy lucked out here, and he's got a bunch of different resources, so one, two, three of them. So he's gonna spend three different resources, so he's gonna go ahead and buy a building as well. So he's gonna buy the toll booth. Oh, so he gets plus one gold whenever he buys a star building. And of course, the star buildings are the ones that give you gold. All right. Now you see there, I run ahead and reset his hearts. You're technically supposed to do that during the night phase, but eh, it all kind of blends. Anyway, here we are with Frog, and Frog has some different resources. So he's going to spend uh, some different resources. He's going to spend two different resources, and he's going to go ahead and buy a building. All right. So uh, what he's gone ahead and purchased is the Ostrich Ranch. And so eggs can be any kind of resource. And if you notice, he kept an egg. And again, you can keep resources from round to round only if you have buildings. So you can't just hoard resources. So you have to have buildings to keep your resources in. All right, so here's the extra card that Goggle Girl drew uh, because of the Reptile Ranch. So here are all of her cards. Now she has to discard one as part of that uh, Reptile Ranch ability. So the one she's going to chuck is uh, this block, all right. Now, uh, she has four resources remaining. She's gonna take two that are the same, and she's gonna go buy a heart. Again, to buy hearts, you need resources that are the same, all right. So, and they do get more expensive, so two of the same, uh oh, yeah, so there we go. <laughs> There's her three gold, all right. So again, uh, you need two resources to buy a fifth heart, three to buy a sixth, and so on and so forth. So they definitely get more expensive. And it's easy to forget that the goal of the game is not to get hearts, but to get gold. All right. So she went ahead and bought a sandwich stand, which gives her another gold. All right. Yes, there we go. And again, that only cost one resource. All right. So... Uh, it's a pity that she did not have that uh, other card to give her an extra. So anyway, she has four now. And we're going to go ahead and move on to Crazy Old Guy. Now, he gets a bonus um, if he does buy stars. Um, but he's not going to... But uh, but so... Um, but he's not going to buy anything right now. So he's going to keep that carrot for a later round. Maybe to buy hearts or something. So Frog passes. We are back to Goggle Girl. She has two different loca locations. So she's going to keep those two resources. Cat has uh, two locations, actually. So she can keep this resource. So she's going to go ahead and do that. And it doesn't matter where you put the resource. So it's only a one-for-one one buildings and resources. All right. So let's move on to the night phase. And again, this is basically the reset phase. Uh, this is the phase where you reset the hearts. This is the phase where you stand everyone back up. And this is the phase where you pass that first turn marker, and then of course, if there are any buildings that give you um, uh, money during the night phase, this is when you also get it, all right? And in fact, did I give money to a crazy old guy right there? Hmm. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on. We are running the level. So, crazy old guy leads the charge, and ooh, treasure, great. All right, so everyone will get not one, but two treasure cards. And I have to say, whenever, whenever you draw this card, I, <laughs> I just feel so good <laughs> when I'm part of a run that includes this card. All right, so uh, getting those treasure cards really makes a difference. Now, one of the things that really um, hurts in the game is when you do have a bad run, when you do die, and you miss out on like five cards. I mean, that's a huge sweep. Um, so right here, everyone takes two damage. Um, so. It almost feels like you can't recover. So um, that is um, one of the problems I find in many games that are push your luck. It's basically the minute your luck runs out, you're, you're pretty much done. And I can't think of any games that provide a mechanic uh, for recovery. Um, and this is a game similar to those that really doesn't. So um, that pressure is there. 
but I approach the game very lightly. All right, and crazy old guy here, he's gonna get money there. Uh, oh, I do remember, all right, great. So <laughs> he's getting his money now, all right, great. I'm glad I remembered. Um, what he's doing though is exchanging, so he was supposed to get two. He has three loose uh, gold pieces there, so he's just gonna swap it all for a five. All right, good. So we're still great. So he's down to two life, frog uh, is down to two. Uh, Goggle Girl is down to three, and Cat, she has three as well. So the ladies, full of hearts. All right, great. So everyone's going in. Uh, they want to push their luck. Let's see what we get. And all right, so we're clear. Again, there are three of these empty areas. All right. So as I was saying, so uh, if you look at that pile, so <laughs> you're looking at that pile right there and thinking, you know do I dare go in? Um, and really, you really have to think about your hearts. You really have to think about that ratio of cards in there. And is it a good idea to go in there? Ugh. We've already seen that serpent pop up, so he's always there. Now here we lucked out and we have another blank, which is great. So everyone gets another one to add to the pile. And you're thinking to yourself, oh man, there's there could be hearts in there. You could buy that powerful building. Um, and I really do like that even purchasing is in turn order. So you might be eyeing something, um, but because you're buying in turn order, um, you might not get it. And that, ooh, a third one, ooh, lucky. Um, and that's another reason why I just mix all of the similar cost cards and made a deck because it just made it more relevant, I felt like. So we're going in turn order to purchase, but if we all have the same amount of access to the buildings, it's almost meaningless. So um, because there is that slight extra draw, ooh, bunny rabbit, one damage. Um, because there is that slight extra um, drawing, um, you don't know what the next card could be. Um, so do you dare buy that card that's on top or do you buy it and then oh you've revealed something for somebody else so again it's just a it's just a house rule so please keep that in mind in the normal game uh, you wouldn't be drawing cards like that anyway here we have people passing goggle girl yeah she's passing that's a huge pile of cards cat you crazy crazy lady she's going for it Ooh, and she takes one point of damage from the bat there and i do believe we've seen all the cards in the deck now so um, and she does survive, so great for cats. All right, so again, there are not a lot of cards in that adventure deck, um, and so that's why I feel like this is definitely a game uh, that could do expansions, although thinking about it, as we watch all the everyone pass here, yep, everyone has passed, including cats, so she's not crazy. Let's see what she, she would have gotten. Ooh, the snake, so good call, cats. Um, so if there were was ever an expansion for this game, yeah, I couldn't imagine it being the um, adventure deck unless it's going to be alternative art. It would be kind of cool to think of like a dungeon, if they could work a dungeon in this. And you know, these are the makers of Above and Below, so um, definitely the potential is there for something cool. Alright, so anyway, crazy old guy here is first. Uh, he's going to spend two carrots, so, so he's getting hearts. Alright, so two of the same resource gets you hearts. Alright, so now he has five. Yay! Alright, so five. Happy guy. Uh, moving on uh, to Frog, and let's see the pile of resources he's got. And keep in mind, he has an egg from last uh, from last round. So, wow, a couple eggs in there. Great. Cool. So he's got a plenty here. And I do believe, yeah, he's going to spend two resources to buy a heart. Okay. Now, you have to buy the hearts in order. So um, a two, resor two, res two of the same resources to buy the heart, you can't just buy three hearts and skip the two heart one. No, no, no. Um, you can go in order. But again, we're going around and around, so just buy another heart when it comes to you. Now, buildings are limited, hearts are limited, so once something is gone, they are gone. All right, so um, Goggle Girl here with her reptile stable gets an extra card. Let's see what it is. Okay, another rock. And she'll discard a card. She's going to chuck a carrot. Now the carrot is the most numerous resource in the game. There are 30 of them in that resource deck. Now she went ahead and bought a heart. So one, two, three, four, five, six hearts for her. All right, like my little tapping of the screen. 
uh, so we can count that out. All right, anyway, we're here to cat. All right, she got plenty of resources, great. Plus a carrot that she was already carrying. So she's gonna spend one, two, three, four, five different resources, so she's picking up a building. She's gonna pick up, ooh, an endless mine. So this gives her three gold every night phase. Okay, now she has joined the arms race. Well, the money race, the rat race, I suppose. <laughs> All right, so um, that, that makes two people uh, that are doing that. All right, so we're back to crazy old guy. So he's gonna keep a fish in one of his buildings and he's going to drop three fish. So same resource, that means he's buying a heart. And there it is, all right. Plenty of hearts for the old guy. And again, I always play the old guy, so sweet spot for him. Uh, he's got six, six of them now. All right, so Frog, let's see what he's up to. So he's gonna keep a carrot. And he's got three of the same resource, so he's going for the heart. So this is the shopping around that's all heart, apparently. Two, three, four, five, and six, six, all right. So six for them. And we are back to Goggle Girl. So basically, we keep going round and round until everyone passes. So she's keeping two resources, and she's spending four different resources. Uh-oh, she's picking up a lodge. Okay, so that makes three people that are collect that are collecting money during the night phase. All right, so cats, what do you got? So Cat here is going to go ahead and keep one resource, and she's going to spend three resources that are the same, so that means she's picking up another heart. This will be her sixth heart. Two, three, four, five, and six. Yep, six. All right. So six hearts for most people. Uh, money making during the night phase for most people. And uh, poor Frog, no money for him. All right, so here we are in the night phase. So again, this is our chance to reset and get everyone their money. Uh, so two uh, gold for crazy old guy. All right, so he's all set. Pass the first turn marker to Frog. Okay, uh, Frog does not have any night effect buildings, uh, so he's just going to sit there. Uh, Goggle Girl has a lodge, so she is going to collect two gold. Now, by the way, um, this is a game tray that came with the game, that yellow tray, um, and this is, I think, the only game I have. Oh, and three gold here for Cat. This is the only game I own that has the original tray that came with the game. So, <laughs> um, it's small, it's unobtrusive, it fits what it needs to fit. Um, so yeah, there we go, small victory. So this is probably one of the few games I own that still has the original tray. So there we go, had to happen at some point. There you go, folks. So anyway, here we are, running the level and we reveal those bats. Always have to have bats. All right, so two points of damage for everyone. That means there's still one more two damage card in the deck. It's that uh, fly trap, and I believe uh, it can be jumped over. Now, no one has bought a building that gives the jump ability, and I don't believe there's even one. Oh, there is one pictured. It's uh, cost five. It's cost five. All right, so everyone has returned home, and we are going back in. Uh, or back out rather uh, to see what we can see. All right, so let's draw and we reveal uh, a bat or a uh, Cyclops bat <laughs> uh, That does one damage. All right, so there we go So again, I do like the feel of this game. So if you've played video games uh, a scroller, you know a side scroller um, You know what's gonna come up what's gonna be revealed. So this does it for me. It really does feel uh, pretty cool now I have here on screen, I'm going to lay out all of the locations as they appear. Um, now in the rule book, it says to do that. Um, honestly, there's no reason to. I just make a pile of them, but uh, it is kind of cool to see. Ugh. <laughs> the snake. Uh. <laughs> so three damage, three damage, yeah, three damage, and three damage, yeah. Yeah, that killed everybody. That ends the run. All right, so... <laughs> Ah, the resources go back. Yeah, yeah. And everyone else goes home empty-handed. Uh, oh, no. All right, so uh, except for good old Goggle Girl. All right, so our, her herb hut here. Uh, so she fell. So if she does fall, she does get to return with one resource. So I'm just going to draw two, and we're going to pick one. Ah, so carrots. All right, so she's going to keep one of those carrots. 
and uh, the other one just goes right back in there. All right, so she's the only one that came back with something. So uh, very cool. So let's go ahead and do our buy phase proper here. Frog is first. He's got nothing, so he's going to pass. <laughs> so Goggle Girl, all right, she's actually got some uh, resources squirreled away in her uh, location. So three different locations. Ah, very nice. All right, so she's going to go ahead and pick up the Soap Maker. Now this is a cool card, so this allows you to ignore the sludge monster and even gives you a treasure. So there are a few locations like this um, that allow you to ignore monsters, all right? So very cool for her. Uh, everyone else here, oop, looks like crazy old guy is buying a star building. Uh, and this will give him a gold, of course, uh, but because he has this card, the toll booth, he gets an extra gold when he buys star buildings. Uh-oh. So crazy old guy here has the um, engine that I love to get. Um, basically, um, he's got a lodge or something that gives him money during the night phase. And then he has that toll booth, uh, which gives him bonuses for buying the star buildings, which themselves give you money. So boom, there it is. He's got 10 gold right now. So he's halfway to his win. Frog stands up and lays back down. Uh, Goggle Girl passes, and uh, Kitty there passes as well, and finally, Crazy Old Guy takes a nap. <laughs> All, right. All right, so we pass uh, the marker on, and we are now in the night phase. So a bunch of cash will change hands, and then we reset everything. So we'll start with uh, Goggle Girl here, so she gets two gold. And there we go. Great, so her pile is growing. Uh, Kitty here also has... Um, money coming in, but she's got an endless mine, so three money. She's going to go ahead and throw two from her collection to pick up this five. Yeah, there we go, five. Eh, we'll leave it in there and chuck in another five, so she'll pick up a ten. Yeah, so I, I have kept this tray, but I, I have to admit, so you see me struggling there. Yeah, so the tray is kind of indented. I assume that was to help facilitate picking stuff up. Yeah, it really doesn't, so hmm. This tray is not my favorite. Anyway, uh, crazy old guy here is picking up two gold uh, from his own lodge. And then finally, we shuffle the deck, the adventure deck, and get going again. So let's run the level. All right, so Goggle Girl leads the charge. All right, so let's see what we all get. And, <gasps> you know, there are some games where this, uh, they go like this. All right, so it looks like here I forgot to reset some of everyone's hearts, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, so this looks like it's gonna be one of those days uh, when this snake is just gonna come out and bother us. All right, so anyway, everyone is still alive. I'm so shocked I returned everyone home before I hand out their treasure, but uh, they will get their resources. Uh, there we go. All right, so, well, at least we got the big guy out of the way. All right, so Snake is out of the way. We've got two damage cards in there. We've got one damage cards in there. And of course, the treasure and no damage. Let's see. Ooh. All right, so no damage. There we go, great. So we're all feeling good. So it's kind of a toss up. Uh, do you want to face the big snake early or do you want to uh, face it later? Personally, I kind of like to see it earlier <laughs> than later. Um, just so I can look at my hearts and think, okay. <laughs> But what, what, there won't be a, a surprise swing, uh, basically. All right, so we're all going in. Uh, pretty much everyone's got like three hearts left. Ah, another, another blank. All right, great. So, uh, cool. Uh, looks like a nice run so far. We hit the big boss snake, um, and then we have the open plains. Now, um, I do like the art of the game. Uh, there's an awful lot of orange in it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, the, I do like the art in this game. In fact, I like a lot of the art in the series of games. Ooh, another blank. And so that's three, uh, three for three. We've got all three of the blanks. So from here on out, it's damage and treasure. All right, so uh, you can understand <laughs> everyone's feelings right now, and they're going to look at their hearts. They're going to consider the ratio of what's coming up. And Galgarel... Kitty and Cr no, everyone's just jumping in. They're like, no, no, it'll be fine, no matter what it is. Ah, two damage. Ooh. So two damage from the two bats there. All right, so one damage or one heart left. One heart left, and 
One heart left. All right, and one heart left. All right, so here it is. You're sitting there with a pile of resources. You don't know what's in there. Do you dare go knowing <laughs> that there's pretty much damage waiting for you? And uh, yeah, a treasure card. Yeah, she passes, passes, passes. Yeah, they all pass. Yeah, that would be crazy. Let's see what it would have been. Ah, you cowards! <laughs> so again, I always just draw that extra card just to make everyone feel good or bad. So here we are, back in the buy phase, and Goggle Girl goes first. Uh, again, she's just resetting there. I tend to do stuff out of order. It's fine. Uh, so let's check out her spread of resources. Looks like she has three different resources and some doubles. Now with the Reptile Stable, great. She gets to draw another one and swap it around and uh, throw another one back in the pile. So she's going to throw a carrot in. So now she's got some variety. So it looks like she's keeping some. One, two, three, four different resources. And let's see what she's picking up. Oh, looks like she's going for a star location. So four money. And if she returns home with at least five treasures, she gets another one gold. All right. Okay, great. Um, so it looks like we're making a nice run here. So that's the cool thing about having more hearts is you bring home more treasures. So there are locations that interact with, you know, those kinds of scenarios. So it's kind of nice. Uh, Cat here has plenty of resources. And wow, all kinds of different resources. Wow, what is Cat picking up? Looks like a big one. It's not a star location. Ah, so six gold and two jumps. All right, so our first jumps uh, hit the table. And actually, now that I think about it, um, do I even grab her jumps? Yes, I did. All right, great. All right, so I did grab her jumps. All right, cool. It is now crazy old guy. And let's see what he picked up from the adventure. Uh, got a big old crystal. Looks like some variety, some stone there. Cool. So he's going to keep that one for now. And one, two, three, four resources. What is he picking up? He is picking up a star location. Oh, the Bizarre of Oddities. Okay, so he again... Um, if they have five or more, it gets an extra gold. All right, so this one's worth four uh, gold all by itself. But because of the toll booth, it is worth five, not four. Okay, so, wow, he's at 17. So really close uh, to the end here. We're back to Frog. And Frog here, he's got two gold. Oh, man. Uh, let's see his resources. Okay, all right. Got a decent spread there. Uh, let's see if he can get anything. Oh, plus an extra carrot he had in storage. Great. Um, now with the ostrich ranch, he can use an egg as any treasure type. All right. So he's in. The, looks like he's storing two carrots, and he's using four different resources. Now those two eggs are technically different. So four different resources. Let's see what he's picking up. He is getting a root market. So four gold, and once per round he can use a carrot as anything. Okay. So he's our He's our flex, so he can use eggs as anything and carrots as anything. He's going for a theme, you know, it's a, it's a moral victory. He's got six gold uh, right now. All right, so we're back to Goggle Girl. Uh, her bazaar of oddities here. Um, maybe I forgot to get her gold. <laughs> there we go. All right, so uh, she's going to pass. And we are moving on. Okay, kitty here. Uh, is buying a sandwich stand for one gold. Oh, because Kitty is close to winning as well. Oh, and there it is. So 17. So when she gets three, she's going to win during the night phase. So she wins during the night phase. Oh, uh, oh, crazy old guy, not to be outdone, is buying a sandwich stand. Ah, uh, which gives him a gold plus the toll booth. Gives him another gold. So he gets two. Uh oh, wait a minute. So he gets two. So during the night phase, he gets money as well. Uh-oh. Frog here is just going to pass. Uh, Goggle Girl. She's looking at her stuff, and she's going to pass. Kitty's going to pass. And Crazy Old Guy's going to pass. All right, so here we, are, here we are, folks. Night phase. Now it looks like uh, we, have a, we have a winner. So let's see how this plays out. So let's uh, reset everything past the uh, first turn marker. We might not be able to play another uh, run for the level. 
So Goggle Girl, she gets uh, two gold for her lodge. Um, she has some loose change there, so she's going to put uh, three in to pick up a five. She's going to leave the five there, throw in the five she already has, and pick up a ten. And I don't know, it just feels nice to grab that ten coin. All right, All right so let's see what Kitty's got here. So she gets three gold. And um, so there it is, her three. Uh, looks, I think she had two loose. Yep, she does. She has two loose coins. So that means she'll get five. She'll leave that there because she does have a five. All right. So that means she'll pick up one of those ten coins. And she already had one. So 20 coins. And there it is, ladies and gents. So 20 coins means um, the game is over. So cat wins. All right. Let's see if crazy old guy can... Uh, meet or beat um, her 20. So he has a lodge there that gives him two coins. So there's the two. Um, he has some loose coins as well. Uh, yep, he has three loose coins right there. So three loose coins, that means he gets a five. He's gonna leave that five, because he has a five. So throw that in, pick up a nice fat 10. And uh-oh, I think I see an extra coin there. Yes, indeed. All right, so that means Crazy Old Guy has 21 coins. So that means Gemstone. Gemstone Guy wins. Yeah, I don't know any of their names. All right, so Gemstone Guy took it, and we'll go through Frog, but Frog did not win it. And there we go. So um, great art in the game. It's a push-your-luck game. It was a type of game I did not have in my collection, and I'm really glad to have it. I do recommend it to you. It's a lot of fun. I do appreciate you stopping by, and with that, goodbye. Thanks.